Are they injected with dyes? Are they soaked in chemicals? Are they GMOs? Today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that you may or may not know about the new Glowfish Bettas. Recently, Spectrum Brands Incorporated released their new line of Glowfish, Glowfish Bettas. While the Tetras have been around for a while, the release of the Glowfish Bettas has caused a little bit of a stir in the community. The Betta community is arguably much larger than the Tetra one, and so it's brought out a lot of questions as to whether this is an ethical practice. In order to decide whether you think that this practice is ethical or not, it's really important to understand what these fish actually are and how they're different from normal Betta fish. For that distinction, I'm going to be talking about what a GMO is and what artificial selection is and how these Bettas fit into that picture. Many domesticated animals that we have today are produced through what is called artificial selection. In artificial selection, breeders select for desirable traits and cull or get rid of the ones that are not desirable. Through artificial selection, we've produced many things like dog breeds, cat breeds, and also a couple of the fish varieties we have. For example, wild guppies look nothing like the ones we see in pet stores now, and neither do wild betta splendens. You might be able to guess that you wouldn't be able to get fluorescent fish through artificial selection. For that, we need some genetic modification. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, have caused a large scare in the media in recent years. The word GMO can have a negative connotation because people aren't sure exactly what the consequences of eating genetically modified organisms are. And so when it comes to our pets, I understand that people might also have those same fears. However, when we're talking about genetically modified organisms, what we're doing is actually altering the genetics of that organism, usually by incorporating some other genetic traits. In the case of maize or corn, what we're doing there is adding in genetic information that allows it to be resistant to more pests. When talking about the glowfish, they've been genetically modified to incorporate a gene found in jellyfish. We have what are called transgenic lines. Transgenic literally means taking genetic information from one organism and putting it into another. This process is done by actually isolating a gene in jellyfish that produces a fluorescent protein. They can take this gene and actually add it into the egg or sperm of a fish. That's how the original glowfish were made, the glowfish tetras. Not only does the patent that Spectrum Brands Incorporated have make it illegal to try and replicate their methods, but it also makes it illegal to breed the fish because they're able to pass on that fluorescent protein from generation to generation. Once this gene has been added to those eggs and sperm, the fish are actually able to develop normally. It has no impact on their quality of life. The bettas that Spectrum Brands use are likely originated from the Cambodian color pattern. This body is more or less pigment free and then the fins are usually red. So for now, what it means for us is that we definitely can't breed them and we're also restricted to the color lines as they release them. Though tetras have six colors already, right now we're just limited to this highlighter yellow color in the bettas. Even though we're just limited to yellow right now, they do have multiple varieties. They've released females, males, and also premium males, which really just have some red pigment in their fins. As a scientist myself, I thought it would be really neat to own some of these transgenic fish. So I did go out and I bought a little male and female. I took some footage here to give you an idea of what they look like in person. This is of course under a blue LED light, so they are showing off their fluorescence. Under no lights, they look just a little bit different, just a little bit paler, but you can still really see that yellow color come through. These cups, of course, are not meant to be their permanent homes. I just have them in here temporarily for the video before they'll be moved into their permanent tank. I do also want to add a quick plug in here about their care requirements. They are normal betta fish, so you should give them about two and a half gallons per fish. Another thing that's come up is that they have that characteristic sheen on their iris that makes it look like they're blind, but I can assure you that they see perfectly well, they're flaring at each other, they're excited, and they'll be just fine. It's also possible that these glow bettas might actually be a little bit healthier than some of the strains we see on the market. It tends to require some pretty intense inbreeding in order to keep the colors and patterns that we do see. So no, these fish are not injected with dyes and they're not soaked with chemicals. They are, however, a GMO. And whether that's bad is up to you, but I do want you to realize that while yes, they are technically unnatural, there are many things that we consume and that we're surrounded by that are unnatural. One of the harms that people bring up when considering these glowfish is that kids will see them and want them because they represent these pretty colors. There are two sides to this argument, one being that it will promote irresponsible fish keeping and one saying that it actually inspires new fish keepers to join the hobby and learn how to do it right over time. 
I'll leave it to you to decide which one of those you agree with more, but I personally enjoy that there's a lot of options available for different kinds of fish keepers. I want to end this video by saying that glowfish are just another step in the betta fish hobby. There are tons of beautiful fins and body colors to choose from, and you should just get whatever suits you. Make sure you look into their care requirements so that you're giving them the best possible life and enjoy the hobby.